Up next on Line TV, we have Jordan Bowman on the grand opening of the new arena and Fiona Donaire with a story about how ALE helped a student graduate. And me, Phoenix Pruitt, to give you the NBA playoffs news for this year. All that and more, Line TV starts now. Good morning, Cersei High School, and thanks for joining us on our last new newscast of Line TV for the 2022-2023 school year. I'm Jordan Bowman. And I'm Jacob Showey. Crazy to believe that we have reached the end of the school year. This year has gone by really fast. I know. Well, without any further ado, let's move on to our final school announcements. Don't forget that the high school is hosting a free ACT prep summer boot camp from June 5th and 6th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. each day. You can pick up an application in the Guidance Center, but do remember, though, that applications are due by Friday, May 26th. For more information, you can email Janet Benai at the address jbenai at searcyschools.org. Softball trials will be held tomorrow from 4 to 5.30 at the Searcy High School softball fields. You must bring a copy of your current fiscal with you to be able to try out. Soccer tryouts for the next year's squad will take place on Monday, May 22nd and Tuesday, May 23rd at Lions Stadium from 3.30 to 4.30 for both days. Just like softball, you will need to bring a current physical, but you also need to bring your shin guards and soccer shoes for practice. Please check the lost and found basket in the West Office before school ends on Tuesday, May 24th. Any items unclaimed will be no donated. If you are missing jewelry or any electronic items, please describe the item to Ms. Dee Dee once you get to the West Office. Hey Jordan, do you know how hard it is to graduate high school? I don't know what next year has in store for me, so I'm not sure yet. But I heard Fiona has a story about the challenges a senior had to face, how certain classes got him to the point where he is at today. The road to graduation can prove to be a difficult one for many, but there are some like SHS senior Raiden Webb who put in the work and make it to the other side. Brayden was in a difficult position at the start of this school year. Luckily, he had the support of Mrs. Churchwell and the ALE program. At the start of the year, I wasn't in school, like before the year before, I wasn't in school at all. My goal for this year was to come to school and graduate and do whatever I could to graduate. Ms. Churchwell approached me and told me that I didn't have enough credit to graduate. She wanted to propose being in ALE to complete and be able to graduate. We can serve a lot of kids that maybe want to drop out or that may not graduate on time where we can intervene in a, this hybrid system to give them an opportunity and fit it to their needs instead of fitting them always to our needs. It's amazing. I didn't, I didn't expect to graduate honestly this year, but after being in ALE, it's given me a new hope that I'm actually going to graduate and be able to move on with my life. <laughs> Braden Scott Webb. ALE tends to get a bad reputation, but it is a useful tool to many. In a normal sense, a student in the current environment that we have them in, they wouldn't graduate. But I brought him in and brought, kind of laid it out for him. And it wasn't an easy conversation. It's hard to swallow the idea of the ALE. ALE, when you say the name, sometimes gets a bad rap, but I assured him you know, this is not the end. This is not, this is an opportunity for you. ALE helped me because all the classes are online and it helped me because I was in a stable environment. Like it was very quiet. Even though it gets tough, just keep on going because it does get better and it's definitely worth it. School administrators have plans to make next year's ALE program even more successful. There are some students that are gonna need more of what I call intensive support. There's a lot of social economic things that are going on in their lives and they just need to come to school and do their work and go home. Just sit down and talk to us and let us figure out what your plan can be because more than likely we can figure out a plan and help you be successful. It is inspiring to see someone work through challenges in their lives to be successful. Congratulations to Brayden and the entire class of 2023. Now back to the news desk. Wow, Fiona, that was very insightful. I had no idea how helpful the ALE program was for the students. Me either. I'm glad Fiona gave us insight, and now let's move on to some national news. 
Arkansas authorities say the body found inside a burned pickup truck on May 4th has been identified as 19-year-old Johnny Howard of Stuttgart. Howard was reported missing less than two hours after the body and truck were found. The department said that the truck had been reported stolen just two days beforehand. The investigation is still underway. Computer engineers and tech-inclined political scientists are warning many about the cheap and powerful AI tools that are used today. Sophisticated AI tools can now create cloned human voices and hyper-realistic images, videos, and audio in seconds at a minimal cost. When strapped to powerful social media algorithms, the fake digital created content can spread far and fast while hitting a specific audience. They say the implications for the 2024 campaigns and elections are as large as they are troubling. The AI can not only rapidly produce targeting campaign emails, text, and videos, but it can also be used to mislead voters, impersonate candidates, and undermine elections on a scale and speed not yet seen. China on Monday sentenced a 78-year-old United States citizen to life in prison on spying charges in a case that could worsen the ties between Beijing and Washington. Details of the charge against John Xing Wang Leong, who also holds permanent residency in Hong Kong, have not publicly released. Leong was detained April 15, 2021 by the local bureau of China Counterintelligence Agency in the southern east city of Suzhou. The investigation and trials are being held behind closed doors and little information is being relayed other than vague accusations of infiltration, gathering secrets, and threatening state security. Wow, there's a lot going on in the world right now. There sure is, but I'm wondering what the weather is looking like for this week. Same. I hope it stays warm. Luckily, we have London We're here with our weather update. What's the weather looking like, London? Good morning, Cersei. Welcome to that last weather report of this school year. Let's get right into it. Today we had a high of 80. Our skies are at partly cloudy. Our rain at a 24% chance of rain. Our winds at northeast at 6 miles an hour. Our humidity at 68% and our sun rose at 6.01 a.m. On to tonight. Tonight we're going to have a low of 61 with partly cloudy skies. Our rain at an 8% chance of rain. Our winds at north-northeast at 6 miles an hour. Our humidity at 77% and our sun will set at 8.05 p.m. On to that almanac. Our average temperatures have been a high of 82, a low of 61 with our monthly average of precipitation at 5.93 inches and our month today at 1.89 inches. On to that five cast. On Thursday, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high of 86, a low of 63 with a 5% chance of rain. Friday, we're going to have some PM thunderstorms with a high of 86, a low of 63 with a 58% chance of rain. Saturday is going to be partly cloudy with a high of 80, a low of 57 with a 15% chance of rain. Sunday is going to be partly cloudy with a high of 81, a low of 58 with a 6% chance of rain. Monday will also be partly cloudy with a high of 83, a low of 60 with a 5% chance of rain. Seems like even with those cloudy skies, it's still going to have high temperatures. Sounds like a great time for a picnic. Speaking of food though, Jacob, I'm kind of hungry. What's for lunch today? For lunch today, we'll be having classic cheese and pepperoni pizza, jumbo crispy chicken tenders, barbecue pork sandwich, turkey ranch wrap, turkey and ham chef salad, chicken pasta alfredo, fresh fruit, and milk. Thanks a lot, Jacob. Now I'm even more hungry. Sorry, not sorry. Hey, Jordan, you know what I am hungry for, though? What is it now? I'm ready to get a taste of what the new arena looks like. I'm so excited to see it. Have you gotten a chance to look at it yet? Yes, I have. In fact, I was there for the ribbon cutting ceremony. In case you didn't know, last Tuesday, Cersei Public Schools held a, held a ceremony ribbon cutting to officially open the brand new Lion Arena to the public. I was able to get an inside look with Superintendent Bobby Hart and others involved in the building of the arena, like architect Bob Keltner, on how they were able to cut open a new chapter here at SHS. My role has just simply been to work with the contractor and the architect just to kind of get the pro keep the project moving, find out uh, how we're doing budget-wise and such as that. I agreed with the plans whenever I was offered the job and uh, I was readily available to, to, to help. But uh, yeah, I think it was really put together when I got here and I'm proud of the work that's been done. With big construction projects just like this one, there are always some problems that occur and that need to be addressed and solved to make the process as smooth as possible. We built this project, made this project uh, during the midst of a global pandemic, supply chain breakdowns, uh, workforce breakdowns, and so really to be where we are today in really in just under two years is a pretty substantial turnaround. A lot of time and energy went into the planning and I think that's as much as anything is why the project stayed on course the way it did. There were many different people involved in the $26 million project. 
People like Bob Keltner and Raymond Reynolds were two of many who helped make the 2800 seated arena possible. I am a, an architect with Cromwell, who is the, the architect and engineer for the project. Um, my specific role was uh, as kind of the overall project manager, uh, principal in charge of the, of the project. Uh, some other architects involved Corey Edwards. He was kind of the lead architect in terms of the, the putting together the drawings and the design and that sort of thing. I was involved in day to day. I was here every day. I worked very close with Paul and Michelle, our construction team. And we have meetings every Monday, uh, construction meetings with all the subs, making sure everyone needed what they had to have to push the project forward. With the $26 million arena now open, many believe that it cuts open a door to many different opportunities, not just for SHS students, but to the community as a whole. It's large enough that we can have many different events, from state tournaments to, con you could have a concert in here. Um, and so I just think that it's going to be really a shining light for the community. I think it'll draw kids that maybe aren't involved in athletics or dance or uh, you know, even radio, TV broadcast because we've, we've got a state-of-the-art system uh, to do any of that. So I think it'll draw some kids in. And I think it'll give students that are currently involved in athletics, I think it'll give them uh, a sense of pride about, hey, I get to play in and practice in a state-of-the-art facility. It's unbelievable to think that something so amazing yet challenging can get done so quickly and how many future generations will be impacted by the new arena. With absolutely no doubt in my mind, Lions Arena is not only a great addition to the high school, but as to the town as a whole. Wow, thanks Jordan. It's crazy and nice how huge the new arena looks. I'm excited to see all our student athletes use the facility to the best of their abilities. Hey, speaking of that, you know what's going on with sports here at the high school? Sadly, I don't, but I hear Phoenix has all the information of our sports updates. Happy last week of school, Cersei. We've got lots to cover, so let's get right into those local sports announcements. In the 5A Arkansas Division for Soccer, Cersei went to the finals, unfortunately losing to Russellville, but putting up a good fight nonetheless. The girls' score was 2-1 and the boys was 4-2, ending the season with a dramatic and enticing finish. Your Cersei High School team had an intense game last Thursday against Van Buren, the final score being 0-4, unfortunately knocking Cersei out of the playoffs. In national news, after finishing 7-10 last season, missing the NFL playoffs, the Jets have high expectations after acquiring Aaron Rodgers in a trade with the Packers. But the Jets will have to get through a tough AFC East division featuring the Bills and the Dolphins who made the playoffs a year ago, and the Patriots as well. In the MLB, Rangers' Nathan Eovaldi set a career high with 12 strikeouts, keeping the AL West leading Rangers rolling and sending the A's to their fifth straight loss. The Cincinnati Reds erupted Thursday for four first-inning runs against Kodai Senga and beat New York 5-0, taking two of three in the series. In the NBA playoffs, the Miami Heat, Boston Celtics, Denver Nuggets, and the LA Lakers are in the conference finals. An intense game one was yesterday, and tomorrow will start game two out of seven. The Warriors, the Suns, the Knicks, and the 76ers all put up a good fight to get to the semifinals. Well, Cersei, it seems like that's all the time I have for y'all this week. Have a great summer, and let's send it back to Jacob and Jordan at the news desk. Thanks, Phoenix, for those sports updates. I'm excited to see how the NBA playoffs will turn out now. You and me both. Seems like I know how we'll spend the beginning of our summers. Well, that's all the news we have for you this school year, Cersei. We do, however, have our biannual blooper show for the second semester tomorrow, so make sure to check it out. But as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cersei High Lion TV. And to follow us on Twitter at Lion TV, Instagram at Cersei Lion TV, and on Facebook at Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off for the last time this year, I'm Jordan Bowman. And I'm Jacob Showy. Can't wait to see you all back here in August. But until then, thank you guys for a great school year. I hope everyone has an amazing and most importantly, relaxing summer break.